So hello, Claire. It's fantastic that you've agreed to talk to us about your story and your condition, which so many people have not heard about and don't know anything about. Would you tell us who you are and what's happened to you? Well, thank you very much for inviting me first. Um, well, it started for me probably at the age of about five. That's my earliest memory. I remember when uh, you're at school and you have to sit in assembly, you've got to sit on a hard floor or you sit on the floor in the classroom. I was really uncomfortable. My vulvar area was itchy um, and I was just sore all the time. Um, as I got a little bit older, um, my mum could hear me crying in the bathroom because obviously when I was going to the toilet, the urine was stinging on the stores and the area. Um, she took me to see my GP at the time. Um, he was actually a paediatrician um, GP, but he didn't even ask to look. Um, he just took my mum's symptoms, which I said that I was um, in pain going to the toilet and I wouldn't drink anything. Um, so straight away, he said it was cystitis. I was given um, stuff for that, which helped a little bit, but not for long. Um, as I sort of got a bit older, I started to get more embarrassed and didn't really want to see a male GP. So I just kept, kept quiet, um, sort of in my teenage years especially. And then when I got into my early 20s, um, I started to notice that the itching and the soreness was getting worse. Um, I'd had um, a smear test by then as well and thought, you know, maybe there was something, you know, important or urgent. It would have been picked up, but nothing was ever said. Um, I then went to my GP numerous times, actually, in my 20s. Again, none of them asked to look. Um, at that stage, I didn't know I had a vulva um, because I was always referred to it as the vagina or down there or my private. So that was how I would have said to the GP, I'm itchy down there. Um, again, never asked to look and just said it was thrush. So I was given thrush creams multiple times, actually, and I even bought loads myself over the counter. You know, I Googled itching and bought all sorts of things over the years. Nothing really helped. Um, carried on having smear tests. Again, nothing was ever said. Um, and then again, in my late 30s, I started to get a bit worse and I was a bit more confident in my body, in myself. So I went back again and saw um, another couple of GPs. Uh, this time, actually, for the first time, it was a female GP and she actually did ask to look and um, she took a swab. And um, for the first time, even though all the times I was told it was thrush, and that came back negative. It wasn't thrush, which I sort of knew anyway. Um, she then done blood tests, said maybe it might be diabetes related, and that came back all clear. Um, she then said, I don't know what it is. I think it might be early menopause. And off I went. Wasn't given anything for if it was early menopause or talked about. So I just thought this is just normal. So I carried on again for a few more years. Um, it got a lot worse, the itching. Um, turned into like a tear and then the tear after having that for about a year turned into like an ulcer so I wasn't going to go back to the GP because all the times I'd been I kept getting told it was fresh or nothing um, but I got to the stage where I couldn't even sit it was so painful so I went back and saw another female GP um, she looked and originally said it was herpes she saw the shock look on my face and asked me how many partners I had and I said just one my husband for the last 25 years so then she looked again and said, actually, it could be something called vulva cancer, which obviously is quite a shock because I've never heard of it. Um, she luckily did send me on to the two week pathway urgent um, and said, if you don't hear anything in two weeks, please come back and see me. Please you know, go, go to the appointment, which I did because I wouldn't have gone to the gum clinic where she originally said to go. Um, and then I had a biopsy, I had three biopsies taken. And then within 10 days, I was then told I had lichen sclerosis which is a skin condition which caused the cancer which I'd never heard of and also of course vulva cancer um, which was quite a shock um, took quite a lot in really because you're finding out you've got cancer one you never heard of one you don't know anybody else with it a skin condition I'd never heard of I researched it a bit and realized that it's something that I had a long time I ticked all the boxes for all the symptoms which are white patches um, sores, blood blisters, tears, bruising to the skin, architecture change as well. By this, by my late thirties, my clitoris was almost buried, my labia had shrunk. So I did have all the obvious symptoms. The white, silvery skin, I just thought was normal because, you know, I don't look at other vulvas. I had no idea that it wasn't normal. I didn't really look at my own very often. So, you know, I was quite shocked that I hadn't looked often. Um, I then was... Uh, referred to a hospital up in London um, where I had surgery to remove the tumour, also what's called central node biopsy, where they remove um, central nodes to test whether the vulva cancer has spread. 
Um, they then told me they couldn't get clear margins for the cancer because it was too close to the bum area. So then I had to have uh, 25 sessions of radiotherapy so backwards and forwards from Kent to London. That was quite hard. Um, it's quite hard going through because obviously imagine in the area where you've got it in your vulva and groin, it burns, like third degree burns. You can't walk, sit. They can't really help either much because they can't cover it or help with, with much. So that was quite hard to go through. Uh, I went for that um, to then have a scan to be told that although the lymph node biopsy that they'd done came back clear, on the other side, it's, there was a, a node that was sort of lit up, as they call it, and didn't look right. So in the December, um, or six, well, six months after being diagnosed, they decided to go in and remove it and remove any others, which they did, and then came back and told me that the cancer had spread. Um, and at this stage, it was then stage three cancer. Um, I was then given more radiotherapy. Uh, this time it was 33 sessions on my groin nodes and my abdomen which was that lasted eight weeks over time doing that was quite hard going as well and once I got the all clear from that when all the side effects sort of kicked in I was put into instant menopause at 43 so head on all the symptoms all at once which I weren't aware of actually so for a few weeks I thought my cancer had come back because I'm having all these symptoms not realizing what they were I was then referred luckily and put on HRT. I then was um, diagnosed with lymphedema um, because of the uh, radiotherapy on the left side, which they boosted more because that's where the cancer had gone to the left side. So I then was told I had lymphedema in my left leg, my abdomen, my pelvis and my vulva area. So dealing with all that, obviously having pelvic radiotherapy as well, that gives you lots of bowel, bowel issues. So I'm having trouble there. Um, but then, you know, after going for all that, I was so obviously quite angry that it was caught quite late because if it had been caught at stage one, you know, I wouldn't have needed the radiotherapy and as much. Um, so that was when I sort of started to go onto the internet, really, to see what was out there, what awareness there was, and there wasn't any, really. There was a couple of charities um, that I found that done all five Garners with Cancers charities, but they weren't really doing much for vulva cancer. It was mainly ovarian Um so, you know, I just wanted really to help. So I just started, you know, asking him to do more for vulva cancer. At that point, they asked me to tell my story, which I did for them. And then the papers picked it up and my story went viral in 2017, went all across the world, got loads of people contact me and um, thanking me for doing it because they were too embarrassed to, to do it. So then I started my support group where there's over 300 of us from the UK in, and then the Lycan Sclerosis Support Group, which I, I helped run with um, another lady, Emma Norman. There's over 8,000 in that support group now. Um, so together we built the website. You know, we're not a charity. We're not non-for-profit even. It's just literally just us doing it all. We just use our own money and time. We started obviously all the social media pages especially with covid that helped us really because more people joined social media especially older generation facebook and so we started to run um awareness pages really and we do campaigns yearly and really sort of try and pester um, more people to do more especially the bigger larger charities to include lichen sclerosis and vulva cancer in their awareness because you know we, we don't hear of it and even the side effects and um, all the treatment I was given was always aimed at breast cancer. This is what they have for breast cancer. This is what they have, you know, and it's like, what about vulva cancer? You know, we've got different type of, of uh, lymphedema in different parts of the body. We need different hair and care and help. So really just trying to make sure that, you know, we get even sort of coverage and help, um, which has been a hard slog. Um, still not great, but more people are talking about it now. Um, more people need to know, obviously, that they have a vulva because I didn't know uh, and use the correct words because a lot of the time, you know, you do say vagina when it's your vulva because your vulva is the outside area and the vagina is inside. And a lot of people, even a lot of health professionals are still saying vagina when they mean vulva. And it's quite important, really, if you're in, you know, with a health professional and you're explaining your symptoms that you need to say, you know, that it's the vulva area, it's the perineum area, where it is, so you can explain your symptoms clearly and they can understand more. And, um, you know, the more we talk about the vulva and, and mention it, the more chance that later on, like with breast cancer, it won't be so taboo. And the important part really is, you know, we know feel it on the first with breast cancer. It needs to be exactly the same for your whole body, really. But especially for the vulva, which is part of our campaign is to know your vulva. And we ask you to check your vulva once a month like you would do with breast cancer. Okay.
I don't know where to start to say, I, I can't believe what you've had to go through and how full of admiration I am and everybody who watches this will be for you for taking what is the most awful story and doing something positive to help change people's lives. It really is incredible, so thank you. Now, what can we do to raise more awareness? I know from our menopause support groups and the people that get in touch with us, it is still so taboo when we're talking about down below and people are scared and embarrassed what would your piece of advice be to say we need to overcome this you know what, what would you suggest it's a lot of people find it hard to talk and say it so quite often if you take you know you can print off diagrams um off the internet the vulva area so that you know you don't have to speak and say you can quite often say this is where it hurts or i've got a problem sometimes having visual aids and help but you know it's just you got to remember the health professionals you know they see the vulva they see all parts of the body all the time so it's normal for them so you just need to really try and overcome it because at the end of the day you know it could save your life um basically but you know and, and the amount of times we do even i did i, I stopped going and i put i was embarrassed um to go but she, you know quite often if you've only got male gps it's worth maybe asking to speak to a nurse unfortunately nurses aren't trained in vulva conditions diseases so but just getting to speak to those about it and maybe they could research it and look for you some do know about it um just now that's the first step maybe to see them you can, of course, go to a gun clinic, um, sexual health. Quite often, that, that quite clued up on lichen sclerosis and vulvar cancer, so they can help you as well. Um, but <clears throat> it's mainly really trying to overcome it, like, like you would do. You've got to go in there thinking, like, it's just like my knee. I'm showing them my knee or my foot or my elbow. But exactly. I understand how hard it is, but it's just something that you, you need to, really, because it could, you know, it could make your life so much easier, yeah. even with obviously the menopause symptoms of journal atrophy. Um, mm -hmm. and that wasn't talked about at all, but that's getting out there more now. And that's why I think um, what you've done for us for helping with lichen sclerosis is the amount of people that are misdiagnosed. Because I was told originally my LS was menopause symptoms, which yeah. for journal atrophy. And it, also the other way around as well. Mm -hmm. So, and quite a lot of us have both, which I do now. So yeah. you need to be aware of what's what. And that is hard because there are quite similar symptoms and, and look. So it's being aware of your body, what it looked like before, uh, especially when you're younger, to, so you can tell, see what's changed. So you can tell your health professional, a year ago it didn't look like this. And, you know, you can help explain. We say about taking photos. So if you take photos, lots of apps now that store them securely. Um, so if you have photos throughout and it's something you can show your, you know, your GP, this is what it looked like a year ago and now it's like this. Or yeah. especially if you're on treatment, like if you're given estrogen cream or you're taking steroids for the lichen sclerosis, sometimes when you see a new health professional, they think you haven't got either because the treatments work so well. So if you've got photos of before, that makes a big difference. That's really good practical advice. Can we go into a little bit more detail about lichen sclerosis? Because I think so many people will never have heard of this and think, well, what is it? How do I know? So what exactly is it? And how should we, what are the signs that we should be looking out for? Well, it's a, it's a skin condition. It's a chronic skin condition. It can affect anybody, any age. Um, so you can be, you know, that we know of, um, we have a parents group, uh, a young as two years old, diagnosed. I obviously remember, you know, around about five. So it can be male or female because men also get it on their penis as well, um, which can turn into penile cancer. Mm -hmm. um, so anyone can get it. It's just more common in menopause age. Um, personally, yeah. I think that's because it's taken that long to get diagnosed <laughs> and maybe more chance yeah. that think that it's something wrong they go to the doctors more at that age and you were younger mm -hmm. but that's why it's more common in that age um but it's yes it's a chronic condition there is no cure at this time for it um it can be anywhere on the body although it is um most common in the vulva area but some get it under their breasts on their back elbows armpits it can be anywhere else um other areas aren't um linked to cancer only the vulva area and the anal area as well it can be so they call it the figure of the of eight which is the whole of the vulva and the perineum area um, symptoms range so you don't have to have all the symptoms you don't have any as well some have been diagnosed by chance 
Um, but the most common symptoms are itchy, your, your, your itchy skin. Um, you can have white silvery patches or all of it, thickened area. Um, because you're scratching, you can then get sores, blood blisters, bruising, um, friction. Um, if, you know, if you're wearing the wrong underwear, tight underwear or your horse rider bike, you'll notice more of the friction. Um, your, the skin can stick together because it's the inflammation. Um, so your clitoris can, can seem buried. Um, your labours can shrink. Um, so that you know there's there's a lot of symptoms but you don't have to have them all mm -hmm. um, and you know that's the main thing that takes people to GPs normally is the itching because they can't bear that anymore but you don't have to have the itching and you know like we say you know there's a lot of vulva conditions even dermatitis eczema um, are quite often misdiagnose each other because they are so similar so why you need to really see a health professional that has seen a lot of lichen sclerosis whether it's a GP or you're sent off secondary care to a dermatologist but there needs to be somebody that, you know, that does specialise in LS because it is hard to diagnose and it's even harder to treat. And one thing that I've read about it that I think most people need to know is this is not contagious, is it? That's right. No, it's not contagious. Um, they don't know if it's hereditary or not. They do say it runs in families sort of between 12 and 15 percent. But because a lot of families don't talk about it, even with their own families, they don't truly know about that side of it, whether it is. Uh, in our support group, there's quite a lot that um, their mums, they realise that their mum must have had it or their nans had it. But obviously, them generations definitely wouldn't have talked about it. So it's getting talked about more with the younger group. Um, but yeah, it's it's. It's not contagious and um, you can't pass it on to your partner. Um, if, if your husband's got it, it's just coincidence. Um, but there's still quite a lot I don't know. I don't even know what causes it 100%. Um, it's thought to be autoimmune disease. Um, but again, because it's classed as rare, but many doctors don't believe it's rare. It's just rarely recognised. So because of the, the side of fact that they do think it's rare, not much money is spent on it for the research side of it. There is quite a lot of research going on. I'm involved in quite a few projects myself. Um, all around the world is, is going on, but not enough, really. But, um, yeah, it's not enough known about it's just it's a skin condition, really. Mm -hmm. And one of the first line treatments, would the doctor uh, prescribe steroid creams? Is, is that what you had? Yeah, the... the uh... The first line is um, ultra potent steroids. It's got to be a strong steroid. In the UK, the brand name for that is Dermavate. So most people are put on, are put on that one. But again, like any condition, not all the same uh, medication works for everyone. Some might need a, a lesser strength steroid. But the, you know, the most common one is the higher strength one, Dermavate. And uh, the guidelines really are that you, you put it on once or twice a day. Most will say once a day for one month. And only then, if your symptoms are improving, you can then drop down to every other day for a month. And once again, if it's improving, then you can go to twice a week. But some people need daily for a lot longer than that, at least a three months or even longer. Um, you know, and then again, now research has started to see whether um, steroids should be used as only when you flare up or constantly, um, because there was some research done in Australia in 2016 that showed that they had 500 patients in the trial and none of the patients that were using the steroid constantly as a maintenance dose, which is once you're in remission, you can use once or twice a week or daily if it's a lower strength one. Um, none of them got cancer and they didn't flare um, as much and you know it stopped the progression, slowed it all down, whereas those that were in the group only as and when did. So the UK have started a similar um, research now, but that is mostly what most specialists will say, because at the end of the day, it's like any treatment, really. You don't just stop. You know, there is no cure. The steroid isn't a cure. So it's the steroids you've got to use. But because obviously of eczema and psoriasis, there's quite a lot of bad, especially on the internet, to do with bad feedback on steroids about withdrawal and about thinning of the skin. But that's not the same for lichen sclerosis because it's only on a small area of the body. We only use a tiny amount, even if it's daily you know the side effects are extremely rare and it won't thin the vulva skin if used in the correct way in the correct areas so that's where sometimes even health professionals are given the wrong information because they're not you know that knowledgeable in lichen sclerosis or maybe don't do the research or join some of the organizations for it so that's important really is that you know about the steroids and to use them regularly and it's why i think you need to be seen in secondary care because you need to be looked at looked after at least for the first year so they can help you get into remission help to find which steroid works because 
creams don't work as well as ointments because obviously the ingredients irritation so it's making sure you're on the right one for you and to help you get into into remission and to treat it then by yourself do you have to use special types of body wash like you would say for eczema yeah you use virtually the same ones um non-perfume um you know as less ingredients as possible um again that's the same not one cream will suit everybody so it's trying to find which one works for you um because you've got dermal 500 and aqueous cream for example that's now come out that it's got um ingredients in that which causes contact dermatitis allergic dermatitis so you know that's now not not recommended as a leave-on but just as a, as a wash Things like hydromole, that's quite common. A lot of people like hydromole, which you can wash in, use as a moisturiser and a barrier. Some use double base, which is a moisturiser. Some use Vaseline as a barrier because they're starting to look into the effects of urine on the skin for lichen sclerosis. So having something to cover the area before you go to the toilet is really helpful. Like we say in our support group to put um, some of these ointments, emollients on your toilet paper when you're going to the toilet. So it's a lot easier to wipe, so it's not as painful and protects the skin so there's lots of ways you can help um, to make you know the flares less if we were to say what would be your top tips your advice that you could give to women to look out for spot and be able to get the help they need for all conditions to do with the vulva particularly lichen sclerosis and of course vulva cancer what would your top tips be Claire? My top tips would be to check and feel once a month when you're in the shower, doing your breast checks, check your whole body, really. But just check your vulva. Make sure you know what your vulva looks like so you know what's changed. And anything that's changed, whether it's um, obviously you're itchy, it could be something you've used. Keeping a diary is a good idea, what you've eaten, what you've done that day. Stress is, is you know, is, is known to cause um, skin conditions to flare, which we see that in our support group. So just knowing what's causing these things. But something that's itchy, sore, obviously bleeding. Uh, if you've got a lump or a sore that's not healing, then go and see your GP. Because, you know, because like uh, vulva cancer, you know, the symptoms for that are normally um, a lump, or an ulcer could be thickened colour changes, black skin changes, uh, your skin changes colour, um, you know, even itching, obviously irregular bleeding, get checked, just anything that's not normal for you. So the important thing really is, is to, you know, realise that, you know, what you would put in your mouth on your face should be the same, you know, as your vulva area. Just don't put perfumes, don't do douche, don't do anything to change the pH. Just, you know, just look after it. We spend so much money on our face, but nowhere else. So just really, just, just the important thing really is yeah. knowing the symptoms of, you know, yeah. vaginal cancer, vulva cancer, lichen sclerosis, and then just check yourself monthly at least. And if you go to the doctor and they haven't checked you, what would your advice be? Because you obviously had such a, an awful experience. So now you've come out fighting. What would your advice be about getting the help that you need? I've often thought this. If I could go back to myself again, I would have, because I was, I was so relieved when I didn't ask to look. But really, they should have asked. And I wanted them to ask. I didn't want to say, shouldn't you look? Or can you look? Um, so, you know, because I was quite young, so I was embarrassing. Whereas now, looking back, I wish I'd said, well, aren't you going to look? You know, if I had gone in with an even itchy uh, ankle, they would have asked to look. So yeah. the important thing is really is, is to ask them to look if they don't. If, if, you know, if you're worried, then, like I said, maybe see a nurse first or take someone with you. You know, obviously male GPs have got to have a chaperone, call a nurse in or take someone with you. But just make sure they look if you have. Don't, and if you are given, um, you know, you're told you've got thrush, then ask for a swab. Um, if the treatment doesn't work after you've used it, then go back and say it's not working. Maybe it can't be thrush. You know, yeah. mention lichen sclerosis, vulva cancer. And please don't accept it when they say you're too young. Because, you know, you're never too young. Lichen sclerosis, although common in older women, anyone can get it. We're getting a hell of a lot more, you know, joining our support groups that are in their 20s and 30s. Vulva cancer, we sadly had someone in our group that, that joined that was 17 years old that, that had vulva cancer. Again, that's obviously you know, more common in women over 70, more in the 90s. So sometimes, you know, doctors do sort of have a bit of a you know, tunnel vision to age, really. So just... Just stand up for yourself, really. I wish I'd, I'd done a lot more. Yeah. 
So getting it looked at, getting yourself checked, early diagnosis and pushing for that, not just putting up with it. I think we hear this in our support groups a lot is that you're like you said, oh, they, they don't seem to be worried about it. I'll just go home and hope it goes away. But no, we need to empower ourselves with this knowledge to say, I'm going to take control of my health and my future. Where can we go to find out more and uh, get help with your support groups? Um, well, we're, like I said, we've got a website, which is lsbcukawareness.co.uk. And that's our website. And that's got all our links to our support groups on um, because we have, obviously, we have a group for parents with children with lichen sclerosis. We have the main lichen sclerosis support group for women. We have one for men, a mixed group. Uh, we also, I also have one for those diagnosed with vulva cancer um, and also VIN, which is the pre-cancer. Um, and also I have one for biological cancers um, that have um, given them lymphedema. We have a separate group for that. The links also for our Instagram, Twitter, um, accounts as well and we have lots of information on there and charities that you can help you can reach out to us our email addresses on there as well um, and then we can give you more links then to other uh, websites which help like the Volvo Pain Society just one for example but you know and the BS, um, BSSVG as well and there's loads of help we can get but if you just go onto one website we can then give you lots of others. That's absolutely wonderful. And we'll definitely be sharing that link with everybody that we come into contact with as well. So Claire, thank you so much for sharing your story. We wish you well. And what you're doing is absolutely incredible. Raising awareness. Um, you know, I've never known anybody be so passionate about doing this and helping uh, so many other people. So thank you very much for sharing your story. Thank you. Thank you for asking me because it makes a big difference, like you say, you know, awareness saves lives. So thank you.